Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not a type of brother to play with. See a lot of people acting like a oh yeah. Oh, ball play sounding like haters. We the young kings of this generation. Oh yeah. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, Pitch Side with Parker. Know you've been seeing a lot of us recently, but. Hey man, it's the Champions League. It's one of the most exciting times of year to be a soccer fan. So we've been wanting to keep y'all up to date and covered with these videos. And I will let you know, there are more videos coming, but my computer's kind of weird. I can only edit one video at a time, so I can't like really do things in advance. So I wait to make sure that we can get these videos out on time after the games happen. And then some of the stuff that I've been working on in the background, you might see a little bit later. So videos coming in the middle of next week, but we did want to talk about the Champions League final because uh, obviously we just watched the game and Bayern came away 1-0 victors. They win the treble under Hansi Flick, which honestly in all is a pretty great story for them really because they started the year really poorly, mm -hmm. fired their coach, got Hansi Flick in, and then they've gone on this 21-game unbeaten run and just waltzed through the entire Champions League, yeah. waltzed through the Bundesliga restart, won the Pokal Cup as well. I mean, you have to give them credit. What a season. Yeah. They they went invincible throughout the Champions League as well. The first team to do that. So you got to give credit to the robots there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, full disclosure, we were definitely both rooting for PSG, I think. Yeah. Um, as he said before, Neymar's his favorite player. I just like watching them a lot more than Bayern as well. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like Bayern, as you said, robot-esque. I feel like the way they play is very illustrative of what works now. It's like yeah. high press, you know, run more than the other team. Yes, keep possession is important, but the most important thing is creating turnovers up the field and scoring off of it. And like you said, it's just, it can be kind of boring to watch. All the top teams are kind of doing that. And yeah. it's just not as exciting as the way PSG play. Yeah, they just really suffocate teams who try to, who try to play out of the back and try to play that like beautiful football, but like, Football is changing now. Like, you see Liverpool doing that. Like, you're saying all the top teams are starting to do that. So, I feel like everyone just has to adjust. And, and it's kind of exciting to see, like, what's going to beat that in the future. Forgot to turn the car off. <laughs> but, yeah, sorry if y'all heard the car in the background. Forgot to turn the car off. But, yeah, it, it is interesting, like, what can actually beat that. And right now, uh, obviously, we don't have a lot of answers because no. PSG is one of the most well-constructed teams we've seen in a long time. And... As I said in the last video, it's not just their attack. Like Their defense has been really good throughout the tournament. Yeah. And honestly, for large parts of the game today as well, they played well. I think it was really just that one matchup of Coman on Carrer because he was, was shredding up. That was the only like weak spot of PSG's def defense. And that, I think they need to fix that during the summer window because Coleman was just eating care up. If, if PSG can improve one area, it's certainly that. Whereas Bayern, it just feels like every position, they're just, they've got the perfect players. Yeah. And they might even have multiple because as great of a game as Coleman had, he came in for Perisic, yeah. who had been playing really well and scoring. And, and next they just season, <laughs> yeah. Just add on Sané to the recipe of attackers there i mean it's just unfair man yeah. but yeah carrer certainly felt that way this game there was a few chances for psg not yeah. a lot but mbappe had the best chance of the game neymar had kind of an open shot at the beginning as well good mm -hmm. save from neuer at a tight angle but mbappe's was definitely the best chance yeah you gotta put that away honestly uh i feel like people aren't gonna talk about that as much because most everyone was looking at neymar to say like he didn't really contribute but like I feel like Di Maria got taken out of the game by Alfonso Davies. Like, he did a little bit better, like, taking out a few passes, like, away from him after he realized he couldn't dribble past him. But, yeah. Um, they kind of nullified Mbappe throughout the whole game, and that kind of, it honestly nullified Neymar as well because if you watch PSG, Neymar dribbles through a few players and links up with Mbappe, but there was no one to link up with today. So it was basically just Neymar trying to dribble through, like, six players today and, and getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was it was definitely not PSG's finest performance, but no. I think a lot of that also goes credit to Bayern. So, yeah. you know, deserving champions, Champions League winners, treble winners, and you have to say they were the best team in Europe this season. Yeah. And that's what the competition is there to decide. So, realistically, you know, yeah. hats off to them. But yeah, so for the rest of this video, I wanted to bring up a little topic of something that came up in the news this week from an Arsenal fan perspective. And then obviously Daniel as a Barcelona fan may have some things to think about it. And he watches a lot of Arsenal too. So yeah. 
basically, as we know, Arsenal signed Willian. I haven't really talked about that at all in the video. Uh, I wasn't super thrilled about the signing, but it's not a, really a bad thing for Arsenal either. It's just a little bit of squad depth. Um, but a report came out this week saying that Mikel Arteta, when he was on the phone with Willian trying to convince him to come to Arsenal, the big selling point that Willian said made his mind up was that Mikel Arteta said he has a plan to win the Champions League in the next three seasons for Arsenal. And that's saying a lot. That's saying that he will get it in one of his first two tries because Arsenal won't even be playing in the Champions League next year. Yeah. And that's him banking on the fact of making the Champions League off of next season performances. So that's a lofty goal from Arteta. And I've seen some Arsenal fans saying like, Oh, what is he talking about? He's being unrealistic. I've seen some saying this is the ambition we want to see. Mm -hmm. That's more the camp I fall in. Mm -hmm. But my question that I want us to discuss, Daniel, is um, is that a realistic target for Arsenal? And who could be first to win it between Arsenal and Barcelona? Because we're going through kind of similar rebuilds at the moment. Yeah. Realistic for Arsenal? That's a tough one, honestly. Because, honestly, like you got to look at Bayern Munich. They're, they don't look like they're going to be going anywhere anytime soon. And also, even Real Madrid, like, they lost to Man City, but they they looked pretty good. Boy, they had Ramos as well. I mean, you could tell how big of a difference that made. And he was he had been their, really their best player down the stretch of the season. Yeah, and then Manchester City are trying to add on to what they have. And then Liverpool will be back. Oh, that's tough. I, I think Arsenal will be in the Champions League in the next coming years, I will say that. But who's gonna who's gonna be first though? So you guys are in the Europa League, so that kinda mm -hmm. like counts you out for this season. And we have Bartomeu as president, so that kinda <laughs> so that counts, counts us out, you out for this season. <laughs> so uh, Yeah, because the new elections are in March, right? So yeah. that I mean that will be most of the way through next season already. Yeah, that's the whole season. Why are the elections in March? I don't know. They they were like, you should bring the elections forward. And he's like, okay, I'll just bring them up to March. <laughs> I don't... What does that do? They didn't yeah, achieve anything. Yeah, I guess it gives you a time yeah. to plan in the no, summer for really. the next year. But yeah, Kinda. that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. But um, That's actually probably worse because what if we're contending for like La Liga or the, even the Champions League? Like, That's in that kind of... You have that turnover Really happening. important part of the season, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Something that is true about both Arsenal and Barcelona right now is that they've been starting to kind of clear things out and making a lot of changes. So mm -hmm. at Arsenal, it's been Raul Senyehi, who was one of the directors of football. He got axed, and they're trying to kind of streamline that process a little bit of um, paying less people to do the same jobs, essentially. Yeah. And in the end, freeing up more money for Arsenal to spend on transfers. They just signed Gabriel Magalhaes. Uh, center back from Lille, who should help out the back line a bit. Um, so Arsenal are kind of trimming down and trying to get rid of some of that dead wood, and Barcelona have been making some changes too. Yeah. Um, well, right now, like, we haven't really made huge changes yet, but, like, there's talks of, like, actually playing the players in the right positions <laughs> and, you know. Whoa. Yeah, mind-blowing stuff concept. like that. Oh, my gosh. And uh, right now, it's just talks of, like, who Koeman wants to feel like fill in the roles of the players who he wants to be leaving. That's that's the big thing actually is um Jordi Alba, Busquets, and I think Suarez and maybe Sergio Roberto could be on their way out. So there's a few captains in there who could be out, and then also Rakitic and uh, Braithwaite. So there there is a squad little overhaul you could say, but nothing's really happened yet. So it's just a lot of talk right now. And what do you think about Kuman? Because we talked about it like really briefly just as a, he was a possible candidate for the Barcelona job, but we haven't talked about it since he got officially appointed. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about him? Because we know his stint at Everton was not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the last time he was in a big club job, but yeah. he's been doing really well for Holland recently. So, I mean, you obviously you, you're hiring him with the hope that it'll be more similar to how it was with Holland. But yeah, I don't really look at him from an Everton perspective because like recently I've just I just been looking at Netherlands and we have Frankie de Jong and that's the thing he wants to bring in more Dutch players to the club and there's a huge connection between the Netherlands and Barca and obviously uh Everton you can't really like forget that but I don't really hold that against him too hard 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's kind of what I think of it. And it's definitely more the Barca way, too. Like, yeah. that's what we talked about with him the last time we spoke in the video was that that connection is very intrinsically Barca. Yeah. And that's what you were talking about getting back to. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, definitely changes at, at both clubs. But if, if you were to have to say one team more likely than the other to win in the next three years, Barcelona or Arsenal? I think we have more to do for than you guys right now like transition wise really so yeah like we i think y'all are way closer to winning it now than we are well we have we're gonna have we're they're gonna have to like change coaches again because the candidates for um the new president want to bring chabby in and not kuman and they were mm. saying no matter how good kuman does like we want chabby and Messi wants chabby as well so so that's what you mean by it being a delayed process yeah then. like this this next season for Barca is kind of like I'm kind of rounding it off honestly. I'm not really taking you it. You told me last night you were excited. I am excited, but I'm not <laughs> I don't I'm not like if we don't win La Liga or if we don't win the Champions League and we go out again, I won't be like, "Oh man, like we should be here, we should be there." But like, I know where my club is at, so mm-hmm. I'm just excited to see us get back to like how we were like the past years, I'm going to be honest, I have not been excited to watch Barca games. I just kind of watch them. I, I just miss that feeling of getting excited watching them play. But I feel like I'm starting to, I'm going to start getting that feeling again. Yeah, so, yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. I mean, that's all you can ask for. And I, I feel a similar way with Arsenal because it's kind of the same. Like, it was so hard to watch games under Emery. And Arteta's mm-hmm. definitely brought that back. But it still hasn't really been, like, free-flown football. It, it hasn't yeah. been... Wenger's arsenal for sure. I mean, but that's so far away at this point. I don't. I want Arteta's arsenal. Mm-hmm. I don't want Wenger's arsenal back right. because, especially at the end, that just wasn't working. Like the game passed him by a little bit. Yeah. And Arteta's got a little more sense about him and a little more of the tactics of what work now. I think a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, like, what his goal is for how he wants the team to play. Yeah. Because it seems like last year he was really happy with three at the back. I personally don't really think that's the way forward. I think you got to play four at the back. I don't know. The vision of Champions League in three years seems very extreme to me. And Mm -hmm. I I like that he has confidence, but to me, that's almost putting too much pressure on your players to turn it around so fast. Like, we got to look at really what Arsenal's squad is right now. Yeah. And by the end of the season, before the transfer window, what I was saying about Arsenal is they have a mid-table team. Mm -hmm. Like, if you look at the actual squad depth, and this is without any signings, like... I think Willian, honestly, I really don't think Willian improved the quality of Arsenal at all. If you look at the quality of the whole team, I think he can be a useful player. But how much does he bring that some combination of Aubameyang, Saka, Martinelli, Lacazette weren't already bringing to the team? Yeah. To me, not a lot. It's an extra body, and that's good, and Arsenal will need that. But mm. And then, honestly, at this point, same with Gabriel, like I, I believe in him for the future. I think he and Saliba can hopefully be a partnership for the next five yeah. to ten years, even for Arsenal. But I don't expect them to come in next season and be like the best center backs in the league. You know what I mean? And yeah. realistically, they're probably gonna be playing next to David Luiz in a back three. Yeah, three. Yeah. And I'd love to see some development, but like it's kind of like you said, I, I'm looking more towards the future a little bit than yeah. even than three years because I don't expect a whole lot next season. Now, you add Partey, you add OR maybe to the squad. Okay, now we can talk about Arsenal yeah. competing for top four. Yeah. Like, say. that's the next step. This The next step is just qualifying for the, the Champions, Champions League, League, not winning the Champions League. And even I mean, you, Arteta, man. Like, even when you get to the Champions League, you got to have that experience throughout the knockout stages. That's, I mean, look at PSG. Exactly. It's taken them all of this just to come up and lose in a final. Yeah. And... Once they've had this one year where everything came together for them, they still had to run into Bayern. Yeah. Like, it's a very hard competition to win, and that's why it's so highly prized. And, yeah, I feel like Arteta was making it sound a little too easy. Yeah. <laughs> He's clearly modeling after Liverpool. Yeah, that's the one he is, thing. He is. And, like, I respect it. Obviously, it works. it's worked for them, but they've done a lot of things that Arsenal haven't really done yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, their transfer business was quality the amount they got for Coutinho yeah the way they invested it by buying players like Van Dyke and Allison. Allison for sure 
I mean, they invested their money really, really well. Yeah. Salah and Mane, yeah. like, got them pretty cheap, both bargains. of them. I mean, combined, they were, what, like, Even 50 Firmino. to 60 million? Yeah, true. And and Arsenal spent 80 million on Pepe. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. not, th- and I don't think that was a bad signing, but it just the levels are different. I and if that's what you're comparing it to. For that, though, the, the way the market was back then compared to the way the market was when Arsenal bought Pepe, mm-hmm. but I think back then Pepe would have went probably for less than like Mane and Salah or around that yeah area. yeah I agree but yeah the way the market is now like the quality of player if you paid what Liverpool paid back then if you paid that now like you probably wouldn't get you couldn't get much yeah I mean what Premier League wingers could you get for 25 mil now because they got him from Southampton in the Premier League I mean, who are you really getting like Bernard from Everton <laughs> like bro it's not it's not comparable Frazier yeah, Ryan Frazier, honestly, that was Arsenal's target all yeah. of last summer, so I know about that one. But yeah, man, like, I just think, I, I like the ambition, I, I really do, but I, I just want to say to the Arsenal fans, because I know there's a lot of them watching this, like, temper your expectations, because Champions League in three years is talking pretty reckless, if you ask me. I just want to qualify for the Champions League next year. I don't care how it happens, if it's Europa League or the league, uh-huh. I'd love to finish top four, but man, that... I wanted to talk about that because I felt like that was a pretty outrageous statement. I still think Barcelona could do it within three years because you know what? Y'all got Messi. And if Coleman can at least fill the team that is more cohesive Mm -hmm. and they're willing to play for him more, Mm -hmm. because that was the saddest part about the 8-2 to me was they just gave up. They didn't care that they were getting embarrassed in that game. There was no pride that they were fighting for. It was a bit of both. There was no pride and then there was just no, like, plan either. Like, that um, when Suarez scored, the to make it 4-2, mm-hmm. there was just no reaction. Right. Like, there should have been subs made right there. I mean, it seems like something that might be a little far-fetched for both of our teams. Yeah. But, you know, that was something we wanted to talk about as a Champions League topic since this is the Champions League show. Um, once again, man, congrats to Bayern on winning. Uh, Jonathan, I know you're probably watching this video, <laughs> and I, I know you're real happy. So, uh, congrats, man. Uh, definitely deserve from Bayern. And, you know, a lot of teams will be trying to knock them off the throw next season. You know, our favorites included so we want to talk about that a little bit but thank you for watching the video um and as always man we'll be back with more so if you're new subscribe and come along for the ride you definitely don't want to miss everything that i have coming but thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video peace